We're going to look at solving an exercise as a course correction or a diversion using sine or cosine. A question along the lines of having a flight plan track and due to weather maybe painting on your weather radar down the bottom there you think well I don't want to go along that original flight plan track so they tell you that you elect maybe to divert off track left for argument's sake at maybe a 45 degree angle and then intercept later at some shallower angle perhaps so for the exercise we'll make this a 45 degree angle of diversion and a 30 degree intercept and the question will be how much more time or distance does this track around the corner take compared to the original track distance across the bottom they would also tell you how long you held this track for you know, perhaps five minutes or if you had a ground speed as well you could convert that into a distance if they told you your ground speed was averaging 420 knots and you held that for five minutes then you could work out well how far would that take me and that would be 420 knots for five minutes multiplying 420 by 5 and then divide by 60 of course because that's minutes that would be equal to a 35 nautical mile distance there so I can work it in nautical miles now rather than minutes and just keep everything in miles <coughs> so if that's a 35 mile leg <coughs> this would be more than 35 to resume track but how much longer is that total distance going to be compared to across the bottom here so to solve it with sine or cos remember we need a 90 degree angle because we can't do anything with Pythagoras or sine or cosine without a 90 degree angle and that angle is not 90 because I've got 180 total minus the 45 in one corner minus the 30 in the other corner that leaves me 105 degrees up here so that is not a 90 degree angle but I can easily solve that by splitting this up into two smaller triangles by just dropping a vertical line down there from the apex and that now makes two little triangles each with a 90 degree angle so that little triangle there has 90 degrees in the corner and this other triangle has 90 degrees in the corner so I've now got two triangles this left hand triangle we'll call triangle number one has 90 in one corner which out of 180 leaves me 90 and then less the 45 in the other corner leaves me the balance the remainder out of 90 of 45 so that makes that a 45 degree angle so that makes this little triangle a isosceles triangle as well as a right angle triangle isosceles meaning two equal sides, two equal angles. And I could solve that with Pythagoras, but I was going to use cos this time. And remember the cosine ratio equals adjacent to hypotenuse. That's what cosine represents. And if I wanted to transpose that ratio, I can use my little transposition formula that we've used in other examples, like in charts a bit earlier when we could split this up and we can transpose the formula just by connecting these together and saying well I've got cosine in one corner I've got adjacent at the top there that leaves me hypotenuse there so cover up whichever one you're trying to figure out if I wanted to figure out the adjacent I cover it up and that equals hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle C representing the cosine of the angle if the angle I'm talking about here is 45 adjacent to that angle is the horizontal one the bottom because that's next to the angle and remember opposite is the one opposite or across from the angle so when we're talking about opposites and adjacents it's compared to this angle that you're talking about if this is the angle is 45 degrees that's adjacent the bottom horizontal bit and this would be opposite the vertical bit so with the cosine ratio if I know the hypotenuse and I want to figure out the adjacent I've, I cover up the one that I don't know so I don't know the adjacent it is equal to the hypotenuse which I do know which is 35 miles times the cosine of 45 times the hypotenuse right so on a trig calculator you could easily just compute cos 45 but I don't have that ability in the exam because you don't have a trig calculator but on your whiz wheel you can easily do cos 45 simply by setting up your hypotenuse here against your arrow so I'm using my arrow as my reference marker and I'm putting in 35 nautical miles here as my hypotenuse 35 on my arrow because 35 is the hypotenuse remember this 35 miles is the hypotenuse so that goes up on your arrow and the adjacent is equal to the cosine of 45 degrees because I'm talking about a 45 degree angle so I come around here on the cos scale 20 25 30 35 40 45 opposite that I get just under 25 which would be say 24.8 let's say that's 35 30 25 24 24.246 24 24.8 
So that makes this 24.8 nautical miles. And of course, this is 24.8 nautical miles as well, because that's an isosceles triangle. So I've solved triangle one. Now to solve triangle two, I need this third angle up here. I had 180 in total in any triangle, minus the 90 in one corner, minus the 30 in the other corner, leaves me 60 up here now. <coughs> and again, the cosine ratio is adjacent over hypotenuse. So if I know my adjacent, and I'm trying to figure out the hypotenuse, I cover up the hypotenuse this time. And that leaves me A over C. So now I have to put my adjacent side against the cosine 460 degrees. And that'll give me the hypotenuse at my arrow. So the adjacent over the cosine of 60, the trouble with the cosine scale on the cac on the wheel rather, is only goes up to 45. Because then we hit the sine scale. But remember how we were saying that the cosine for any angle over 45 is equal to the sine for what's left out of 90. So 90 less anything over 45, let's say 60 for example, leave me a balance or a remainder of 30. So the cosine of 60 degrees is actually the same as the sine of 30 degrees because the cosine of any angle is equal to the sine of the remainder out of 90. So if you have a 90 degree figure to start with minus the cosine of whatever angle you're chasing it is equal to the sine of the balance. So sine 30 is the same as cos 60. That means I need to put 24.8 here against the cosine of 60 degrees, which is the sine of 30 degrees. So now I bring this 24.8 That then gives me the hypotenuse out here against my arrow of 49 and a half. So by putting 24.8 against sine 30, which is equal to cos 60, putting adjacent over the cosine, I get the hypotenuse out here on my arrow. So that makes that side 49.5. And then to figure out the adjacent to this angle now, because we're talking about this third angle of 30 degrees, this is the adjacent side. Now the storm side is the adjacent. The hypotenuse is always alongside. This is the storm side. That's the adjacent. So I now need the cosine of 30 degrees for a hypotenuse of 49.5. Now this time to find the adjacent, I cover it up, and that is going to be hypotenuse times cos. So I've already got my hypotenuse here of 49.5 against my arrow there. I come around to the cosine for the angle that I'm chasing, which is cos 30. And then opposite that, I read 41, 42, 43. So that makes this side 43 nautical miles. Which meant if I had gone through the storm, I would have covered a total of 43 plus 24.8, which would have been 77.8. Let's check that. 43 plus 24.8, 67.8, sorry. So it makes that 67.8. But to go around the corner, it would have been the original 35 that I held for that five minutes, 35 miles, plus the intercept of 49 and a half, which would have made that 84 and a half to go around the corner. That is then a difference of 84.5 less the 67.8, a difference of 16.7 nautical miles. So that diversion has cost me 16.7 nautical miles. It's added 16.7 miles to my total flight distance. And that's how you can solve it without actually having to resort to a scale drawing or, you know, and not having a trig calculator. And you can apply that to any angle just by computing your cosine and sine scales with the hypotenuse being at the arrow and the adjacent being opposite the cosine angle. Thanks for watching.